This is our take five okay. drive. You're Are we ready? <laughs> ready. She's yeah. ready. Yeah. I'll say to my husband, because she's sometimes really grumpy, I'll be like, I don't think it's safe for the alligator to be in the house <laughs> anymore. <laughs> the minute I get home, I am not the mayor. In fact, my kids ground me pretty fast. <laughs> Just living it to the max. Because we're here so short. This, yeah. this world that we live in and we think is everything and, and all of that, it's just, it's not. It's a blip. Hands down. I'm trying to be better doing hands down. Uh, so I have uh, 25 steps on my hands. Family, friends, yeah. um, new friends, yeah. connections. That's, yeah, that's where I, I get my, my fill up. I'm, I'm an antique show girl, so I guess my hobby is like, Moving my body. Yeah. Still do like peak 45. Yeah. And I'm still doing my wiggle with Tracy Anderson. A dear running buddy once told me, you know, what comes up must come down. And what goes down must come up. Wow. Wow. What an honor and what a fun year it's been. We have learned so much together collectively from our Take 5 guests as they've answered your on-the-spot viewer submitted questions. There was a lot of laughter and I will say a lot of unexpected tears as well as these inspiring women got real with us. We are retiring this series as we move into our new season, season 18. So today will be our final Take 5 interview. The guest is someone who you've watched grow up right here in studio. And I know that she has felt your love and she loves you right back. The guest is me. Me. I get to sit in the hot seat. I get to. I get to sit in the hot seat and answer <laughs> questions from you. I can't interview myself, obviously. So to help me, I'm joined by my friend, my colleague, Shara Park, anchor and reporter for KSL News, who is like licking her chops. I'm so excited about you this. You were in our Take 5 chair. I have been in this seat before, and I know the pressure. Well, I think as an interviewer, like I'm fine. I'm pretty much an open book, but it's a vulnerable position to be asked questions. And to give up that control. And yeah. I am loving this. <laughs> She, I love that you are going to feel uncomfortable and you're going to get real with me and ah! we have time to do that. And you're good at your job. I we know are. that about you. Should we switch chairs? Let's do it. Because technically, I mean, this is the host chair. This is the host chair. This, this is the full relinquish okay. of control. This feels weird. Does it? <laughs> well, guess what? I'm going to do this too. At home, they wouldn't know what this means, but this is like the ultimate goodbye control. Yes. She's taking out her IFB. So now I am in control of this show I'm and against. whatever happens from here on out. Yep. Go easy on, on me. Okay. Are you ready? Me. Let's do this. Are you nervous? I'm a little feel nervous. a little vulnerable, yeah. Yeah, you're a little nervous. I can oh, yeah, it's fine. You'll be fine. Okay, first question. I mean, these are my friends watching. You're my friend. I'm just talking to you. That's what I tell guests. Girl chat. Just talk to me. Are you No, more... no, no. Oh, 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 sorry. Oh, I'm yeah, see. The I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, go. I thought go, you go. went over this. Okay. Right here. Are you more like your mom or your dad, and how so? Are you more like your mom oh. or your dad, and how so? I don't want to cheat the answer. I want to be a good guest, but I think I'm pretty equally split. Okay. I have my mom's energy and silliness and I think creative fla I, flair creative maybe is the wrong word okay. my mom was an animated kindergarten teacher yeah and I bring that home like I think my husband after we had kids yeah. was like is this the same person I married that warmth singing? that warmth yeah, yeah I hope so I hope so my dad is is fairly analytical he's a business guy and I feel pretty equally matched yeah. in how they how they shared their gifts with me. I love that. You take a little from each as you I go forward so. in life. I love that. I okay, so. second question. That one was easy for you. Oh, We're gonna get a little harder it was here. It a warm up. Okay, second question. <sighs> oh, I love this question. Okay. Oh, what is one thing you want to be known for? One thing you wanna be known for? You want to be known for. I want to be known for my sincerity. And in this business, I think sometimes people question yeah. if what they're seeing is what they get. And the ultimate compliment someone will pay me is when they say, they almost seem surprised sometimes. Like, oh, you're, you're the same. Yeah. And I hope so. I hope what we bring here is real. It is real. It feels authentic and real. But I hope ultimately I'm known for my sincerity. And I think, you know, over the years, especially as I eased into motherhood, a lot of times I hear, you're a little Pollyanna. <laughs> right? And I fully acknowledge... I don't know if I would go with Pollyanna. <laughs> I fully acknowledge that that's an adequate label, but it's sincere. And over the years, I've, I'm grateful I've been given permission to just be real. Like, yeah. I, it's not that I don't acknowledge the hard parts mm -hmm. of life, and it's not that I don't have challenges yeah. in my own life, but I, I naturally, I, I have to acknowledge it as a God-given gift that I do run a little high, like positive, from a positive perspective. And so I appreciate the opportunity to be sincere with that energy and that positivity because it does come from a sincere place. I love that. I and I, I would add authentic. I mean, sincere, oh, thanks, authentic. I think all of your viewers would agree. Yeah. Like, you just have the heart. I mean, you, Thank you. you're just... You're the best. Oh my god! I don't know if I can be the interviewer. I'll pay I just you gotta later. compliment her the I'll whole time. I'll pay you later. Thank you. That's okay, so that nice. was number two. Number two. How are we number doing? Three. How are we doing? Good. Ah. Okay. 
Number three. This Let's is giving see. me new empathy for this side of the table a little bit. <laughs> you get, get, yeah. Not knowing what's I don't know coming. what to do with my hands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sit on your hands. Mm. Okay. What is one thing you wish you could tell your younger you? So think back to oh. Brooke before BYU, back yeah. to high school in Dav Davis County or Weber County. Box Elder. Box Elder represent, County, somewhere up north. Represent. Um, that it just gets better. That it just gets better. I have loved every stage of life. Like, I, In fact, my husband and I were just talking last night. We had some kids in our neighborhood doing the high school homecoming thing. Mm -hmm. So we were reminiscing about high school. High school was wonderful. I talked to a college girlfriend last week, and we were reminiscing about the BYU days. College was wonderful. And again, not that there weren't hardships. Here comes the Pollyanna <laughs> in it all. But just that it keeps getting better. And, yeah. and I have optimism and hope that it will continue to get better. But yeah. life's been good to me, and I, I love life. Like, I say that in my prayers a lot, which is kind of cheesy like this is a beautiful life and I just am excited about how it will continue to unfold I say I, I think that a lot with my own life I'm grateful for the life that I am living I'm gonna I'm gonna tweak this sure. one a little bit here for you what would you tell your younger self about being a mother um, what what oh. kind of advice or warning would you give to your younger self about that? I waited a long time to be a mom. I know. Oh my gosh! Now I you're know, gonna get cry. Me. I waited a long time to be a mom, and it didn't come as quickly as I would have liked. But once it was here, it was like full steam joy. I love it so much, and I actually. I had two younger sisters, as you know, really young. Like, my baby sister was my high school graduation present. So I was, I felt totally prepared <laughs> and familiar with mothering, because sure. I was a mother figure to them, and I yeah. still am. The only thing that surprised me about motherhood, the only thing, um, has been how much I like my kids. Like, not just love them. <laughs> like, I knew I'd love them. Oh, good, good. That's I a knew good I'd love thing. them, but I like them. You like, like being with them. You like yeah, being with them. Yeah, and st I'm still the mom. I know the yeah, boundaries, yeah. and I won't ever cross those, but I, Mark and I marvel all the time, like, you know, behind we our like closed our doors. Kids. We like them. Like, we like to hang out with them. They make us laugh. I think they're smart. I think they're funny. They're, your kids are hilarious. They're funny. They're so that surprised me is how much I, I knew I'd love them. Be ready to love and like I your like kids. them. I really I like them. I love that. Okay, you almost good made me cry. Take another I one. I cried. Okay. See, Cher is good at this. You were the, yeah. bombs. We get so, it. I know. Okay, this is, ooh, okay. Sharpie. I see a Sharpie. Sharpie. When was the last time you felt really loved? When was the last time you felt really loved I mean I'm trying not to default to the motherhood answer again but that's where my mind goes like we're we're a pretty squishy cuddly touchy family yeah. and so goodbyes every morning I drop my kids off at school and then I come to the studio but there's this prolonged goodbye with especially Penny my two-year-old who is squishy by physical description she's her. just a squish <laughs> and um the goodbyes are, I mean, she's a little dramatic in her character, but one more kish, mom, one more <laughs> kish. And every morning as you say those goodbyes, yeah. and it's for a short time, sure. but they're sincere and that love is rich and real. And we're touchy-feely, and I like yeah. that. I like that we're, we show affection physically, yeah. too. That's so sweet. I love that. Mm. It is. I mean, it's real. It's authentic. You yeah. know there's nothing behind it, that, but just pure love kids that love. comes from kids. Yeah, they love in the best of ways. Oh, you're in the good phase of life right now. I, yeah. so I've, good. I've been warned by everyone no. that it, it doesn't stay you're this good squishy phase. and kissy forever. Okay. Okay, here we go. Number five. Ooh, this is a good one to end on. Okay. But I think I know your answer. What makes your life feel purposeful? Mm. Do you have a lot of hats you wear? You, a yeah. lot of aspects to your life, the TV side, the mom side, yeah. the, just the everyday question. The family side. So what in your life makes it, you feel purposeful? I think priorities. I think priorities. As, as working moms, and you'll relate to this, we're often asked, I'm often asked about the balance question. Yeah. Right? Like, how do you strike a balance with all of the roles and hats that you described? And for me, I always answer the balance question with a topic shift, and that is the answer to balance to me is priorities. And I once heard um, Neil Marriott, who was an auxiliary leader for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints, she once took on this question of balance, and she described it so well, and I haven't been able to articulate it as well as she did over the years, so I'll try to paraphrase her thoughts, but she said, when I think of balance, I think of this old-fashioned scale, right, mm -hmm. with two plates, like that chain in the middle and the post, yep. and she goes, balance, by definition, would be those plates are equal, but for me, it's like this, like priority falls here, sure. and I feel super fortunate to have, you know, a job and an employer who's helped me honor those priorities, because my priorities are clear, it's, it's God, it's Jesus Christ, and it's my family, and so... Yeah. For me, purpose comes from making sure those those priorities aren't balanced, yeah. but that my priorities are set. Going into season 18, oh those gosh. priorities have to be balanced in yeah. order to maintain this type of a lifestyle. I, yeah. I absolutely get that. Okay, I, that was number five, but I'm going to throw a curveball. One last question for you. You're in charge. As I love being in charge. <laughs> so I love good when at she it. says that to me. <laughs> um, as you wrap up this Take Five series, you yeah. have interviewed, and we saw it there at the beginning, some incredible women. Yeah. 
What do you take away from interviewing each of these women? What What is your, your lasting impression as we retire this series? Yeah. That's a great question, Shara. I, I say this often. I say it after church every Sunday with I meet, when I meet with fellow sisters in my neighborhood, my congregation, and I say it often when I leave this studio, women are good. Like women are innately good. And a lot of times we get swept up, you know, in, in, in themes like comparison and competitiveness. And sometimes those themes get a lot of attention and noise. But at the root of it, I think women are good. And if we give each other the benefit of the doubt, and I get to see that goodness every day sitting in this chair. And it's like the best pinch me front row seat. Like I say, I get a PhD in life learning from these awesome women. But at the heart of it, women are just good. And I feel grateful to learn from them. Oh, I love that. I love that. Okay. Love well, that's you, it. Shara. That is the Take 5 <gasps> series. That is a wrap with Brooke Walker. Oh, my gosh. Just so grateful that I got to be in this seat for a few moments. We should have given them a sneak peek at what I was wearing before because I... <laughs> Brooke walked out. We were wearing the exact same yeah. color, almost the exact same thing. Yeah. She ran back in and changed. You were the great fellow blondie <laughs> to do this for me. Thank you for taking You're the time. You're welcome. Thank you.